Since late 2020, in addition to continuing to drill in its prolific Staybrook block in Guyana, operator ExxonMobil has ventured further offshore to test the potential of the Cater and Kanje blocks, a programme of four wells all drilled along a northwest southeast trending line is due to complete in the coming weeks as the final well Sapoti 1 approaches TD. Here we take a look at the results so far and what further activity to expect in the search for hydrocarbons beyond Staybrook in the region. The current programme kicked off with the drilling of Tanajar 1 in the Cater block and at over 7,600 metres, the deepest well in the basin to date. The well encountered hydrocarbons in its upper Cretaceous target, but the estimated gross contingent resources of just over 65 million barrels are not enough to support a standalone development. The oil in Tanager was also reported to be heavier than seen in Lisa at 20 degrees API compared to Lisa's 32 degrees. ExxonMobil then moved to the Kanji block to drill the remaining three wells in the programme. While the majority of discoveries offshore Guyana have been in a slope environment, Kanji contains prospects both on the slope and on the basin floor, and basin floor prospects have the potential to contain large hydrocarbon accumulations. Kanji is also covered by two main source rocks, so that the reservoirs here are filled before the hydrocarbons migrate up dip to other blocks in the area. The first well to be drilled in Kanji was Bulletwood 1, which also encountered non-commercial hydrocarbons, but confirmed the presence of the Guyana Suriname Petroleum System in the block. ExxonMobil's partners in the block were Total Energies, JHI Associates, in which Westmount Energy holds just under 8%, and Mid-Atlantic Oil and Gas. After Bulletwood was drilled, however, Echo Atlantic entered the block by acquiring a 6.4% interest in GHI with an option to increase to 10%. Bulletwood was followed by the Jabilo 1 well, targeting the upper Cretaceous in a basin floor fan, and which again encountered non-commercial hydrocarbons. Despite these results from these first three wells, ExxonMobil has been sufficiently encouraged to apply for environmental permits to drill 12 exploration wells in Kanji, expected to support a programme of three to four wells a year from 2022. The final well of the programme, Sapoti 1, was spudded in late August 2021 and should reach TD in October. The well is targeting stacked targets in the Upper Cretaceous and will test a different play in the southwest corner of the block. The prospect sits 50 kilometres north of the Himara gas condensate discovery and 60 kilometres northwest of the Maka Central 1 discovery in Block 58 in Suriname. Like ExxonMobil, Block 58 operator Apache is also looking to test the potential further offshore and will step out beyond its existing discoveries in line with the Cater and Kanji block wells with its next exploration well, Bon Boni 1, which was due to have already commenced drilling, though this has not been confirmed by the company. Back in Guyana, the first well to be drilled in the quarantine block, Kawa 1, was spudded in August this year. Operator CGX Energy and partner Frontera Energy are targeting light oil in stacked targets in slope fan complexes. The well is located in the northeast corner of the block and is expected to reach TD in the first half of December 2021. Finally, a decision on drilling in the Orondite block is expected to be taken imminently by the joint venture partners. Operator Tullo with partners TOCAP a company jointly owned by Total Energies and Qatar Petroleum, and Echo Atlantic, are reviewing and incorporating the Carapa light oil discovery in the neighbouring Kanuku block into their models, as any future Orondike exploration well will focus on the Cretaceous. In summary, interest in Guyana beyond Staybrook remains high, and an ongoing programme of wells is expected to continue in the near term in the search for commercial hydrocarbons in this exploration hotspot.